Hi. And welcome. Welcome. Welcome to Earth. Good day. <laughs> welcome to the big show. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Mr. A. Uh, today, what we're going to do is we're going to look at section 2.1, which is talking about functions. So getting started, here's your homework number six. Go ahead, pause, write that down. Now, we're going to start off by talking about a relation. Now, in a set of, like, for, exa for example, between two sets of data, there could be some relation between the two, right? So, for example, especially when we're talking about uh, maybe a set of coordinate pairs or ordered pairs on a coordinate plane. Uh, you got x, which is your input, y, which is your output. And maybe the x is uh, comprised of the values like 2, 3, and 4. And maybe y is comprised of the values 5, 6, 7. Okay, and this is just numbers I'm pulling off the top of my head here. Now, if there's a relation between the two, we could say that they get mapped. Okay, so for example, 2, we apply the relationship between x and y to 2, and it gets mapped over to 5. Now, we apply that same relation to 3, and we say that it gets mapped to 6. Same with 4. Okay, so what that means is there is some sort of relationship or relation that's taking the values of my input, x, and then converting them to, to the values of my output, y. And uh, by the way, just as a reminder, these are also called our domain and range values. So x is your domain, y is your range. Well, just by looking at that, we can kind of tell that the relationship that's happening is y is equal to x plus 3. Okay, now that we know that relation, then the question is, uh, are these functions? Okay, and the, the big trick about figuring out whether or not something is a function is telling whether or not we have what's called a one-to-one -one mapping. Okay, so a one-to-one -one mapping or a one-to-one -one relation. And what that means is that every element in the domain is paired up with only one element in the range. Okay, so for example, here we have the number 2. It's paired up with only one element in the range, the number 5. And as you can see, that happens all the way down, right? We've got the number 3 here is paired up with the number 6. So since one element in the domain is paired up with one element in the range, we say it's a one-to-one -one mapping. Therefore, it's a function. So let's take a look at a couple of uh, ideas of mappings, right? Now here we have level of education and paired up with unemployment rate. This is a function because each element in the domain, for example, this uh, description of having no high school diploma is paired up with one element in the range. This one, is this a function? Well, this might trick you a little bit because you got the two arrows pointing to the same element in the range, but you got to ask yourself, is this one-to-one? -one? Now you look at McDonald's McChicken. This is paired up with just one element in the range, okay? Its pairing is with 23 fat grams. Now the Burger King chicken sandwich, that's paired up with only one element in the range, which is 23 fat grams. Now it's okay that they both have 23 fat grams. That's fine. What we don't want to see is this to happen. Oh, I kind of, kind of drew that arrow funny there. If this happens, that's bad. What that means is the, the chicken sandwich is paired up with two different uh, numbers in the range. So it's, it's basically inconsistent. If our input is chicken sandwich, then the answer should be the same every time. How many fat grams does a chicken sandwich have? It should be the same every time, uh, 23. But if sometimes it's 23, sometimes it's, in, it's 24, that's inconsistent, so we say that it's not a function. Now, this one also not a function. And really, this one doesn't make any sense. Uh, IQ is not tied to weight in any way, shape, or form. So this one, not only inconsistent, but doesn't make sense at all, right? But if it were, if I put 1342 in every time, then the same, the same value should come back for IQ, but it doesn't. And this is really like the kind of the, the old school uh, picture of what a, a function looked like. It's called a function machine. Whenever you put something in, like let's say you put 10 in, and let's say the function is 2 times x, then you expect to get the same, uh, the same answer back every time. So the output would be 20, and you expect that every time to happen like clockwork. 
Well, if sometimes you put in 10 and you get 20, maybe sometimes 17, sometimes 50, it's inconsistent. You don't know what you're going to get back next. So that is not a function. Okay, which goes back to this idea of one input value. Sometimes we get 104 back, sometimes we get 111 back. Doesn't make sense. Now, what happens if you look at it not as a set of inputs and outputs, but as a set of ordered pairs? Well, ordered pairs are still basically a set or a collection of inputs and outputs, right? So our inputs, you can draw it uh, with this sort of idea of the, uh, the relations with the domain and range. And what you could do is list all the elements in the x or the, you know, all your x values or all the elements in the domain, which would be 2, 3, and 4, right? 2, 3, and 4. Now what you don't want to do is list any numbers twice. You only want to list them one time. So even though I see the number 2 again, I don't want to put 2 on the bottom because that's actually going to lead me to an incorrect answer later on. So in what I have, let's list the elements in the range. I see negative 1 and 3. And again, even though I see the number 3 three times, I only want to list it once. Now let's just draw the mapping out. Uh, 2 goes to 3, 4 goes to 3, 3 goes to 3. And so far it is a function, right? So far every element in the domain is paired with only one element in the range, but this last one is where it sends us into... Uh, basically not being a function. All right, so what that means is the element 2, when put into the like function machine or whatever, when we apply that relation, gives us two different output values, so it's inconsistent. Okay, same thing here. You don't have to draw those circles, right? You could just say, well, you know, I notice I have 2, and then you start scanning the points to see if you have any other matching input values, and it looks like I do, right? I have the number 2 happening here and here. So then check their output values. You notice that their output values are both different. This output value is 3, this is negative 1. So even though we change these values for the other two points, uh, the fact that the, the number 2 gets mapped to two different y values, that's no good. Okay, so then the question here is, can you remove just one of those points and make it a function? And if so, which one would it be? Well, I see two different ones that you could that you could get rid of. I could delete that point, and that would make it a function. Okay, or I could delete this point, and that would also make it a function. Either way, I'm just getting rid of that that sort of redundant uh, mapping of x, like the x value of two to a different 